welcome to uh, this video. Thanks for watching. We're currently thinking of a 50 subscriber video and yeah, feel free to put any comments of what you'd like to see for our 50 subscriber video. It could be another episode of Questions with Friends. It could be, yeah, so we're kind of playing around and let us know in the comments of what you'd like to see uh, Mr. Walsh and I do for in celebration of 50 subscribers. So in this video, what's going to happen is we are going to explore um, a piece of content that seems like students struggle with a lot, but I feel like it's not that huge of a deal, especially if it's introduced this way. I found it very helpful. So let's play a quick little game. It's game time. Oh boy. Uh, we're going to play a quick little game here and the game is simple enough. I'm going to give you a function and you're gonna have to tell me what you think that function is doing. And I can't hear you. So you need to lock eyes with the nearest person and shout out the pattern that you see. So here's the game. Here is the first function. I'm gonna tell you that this equals two. I'm gonna tell you that this equals two. I'm going to tell you that this equals four. I'm going to tell you this equals zero. And I'm going to tell you that this equals three. So there's your challenge. Give it a second. What do you think this function is doing? I can't play the Jeopardy soundtrack. So you're just going to have to imagine it in your head starting now. Good. You probably noticed that that name exponent is there for a reason. That this exponent base seven of 49 equals two because seven to the second equals 49. And that exponent base five of 25 is two because five squared equals 25. And that exponent base 10 of 10,000 equals 4 because 10 to the 4th is equal to 10,000. Same thing here. Let's just keep following this pattern. That means that, well, we've seen that 17 to the 0 power equals 1. And 2 to the 3rd equals 8. If you saw the pattern here and were able to anticipate some of those values of the function, Congratulations, you just evaluated, maybe the first time in your life, maybe not, you just evaluated your first logarithm. Wow, so what does that mean? It means that a long time ago, mathematicians wanted to make themselves sound a lot fancier, and so we use the name logarithm instead of exponent. I mean, obviously exponent, if you had to write that all the time, it would be kind of gross and disgusting but what we say is this okay so a logarithm it's the same exact idea i write my l's cursive for no reason it just helps me for some reason it's the same concept nothing's different this represents the exponent of two that gives you eight which is three, because we know that two to the third equals eight. And this is a logarithm, or at least that's what it represents. That's what the logarithm is doing. I like to think about how whenever I see the term logarithm, all it is is a fancy exponent. That's it. You could even imagine that the word exponent's there, but don't because uh, you will not be taken seriously. So mathematicians call it a logarithm when really it's just an exponent. It's the exponent of this number that gives you this one. Let's do a few extra examples here. So maybe you want to pause the video. Um, give it a second. Uh, 
Hey, so as a reminder, a little friendly way to remember, we say this notation in a very particular way. We say, in this case, it, we, we would say the phrase log base 10 of 100. That's how we would say this expression, log base 10 of 100. Same thing here, log base four of 64, log base two of 32, and log base eight of two. And all it is, is the exponent of the base that gives you the number. So log base 10 of 100 is the exponent of 10 that gives you 100, which is two. Log base four of 64 is the exponent of four that gives you 64, which is three. Log base two of 32 is the exponent of two that gives you 32, which is five. Log base eight of two is the exponent of eight that gives you two. Let's think about that for a second. Sometimes it's easier to rewrite it. So it's the exponent of eight that gives you two. That's kind of odd. You want to like reduce it. Um, so it can't be, a, can't be one or two or three. You want to make eight into a smaller number. But we do know that two and eight have a relationship. We know that two to the third equals eight. And so if you want to work that backwards, this would have to be one third. There's a separate video on rational exponents or fractional exponents under exponent properties. So take a look at that video. We justify why and how fractional exponents work. But this is log base eight of two and it would be a third. It's kind of a silly example, but it's still worthwhile. So this says the exponent of five that gives you five to the eighth. Think about that for a second. The exponent of five that gives you five to the eighth. Well, what exponent gives you five to the eighth? That exponent does. So it's eight. I mean, but we never say exponent. So what this would look like is log base five of five to the eighth equals eight. That's kind of a nice little property of exponents that turns out to be really helpful when we start solving equations uh, using logarithms. So for example, if we kept doing this, log base seven of seven to the fourth, it equals four. It's the, it's the exponent of seven that gives you seven to that exponent. So your answer is going to be that exponent. Only if these two bases match. If you can match up those bases, this property is gonna be true. So the log of pi, of pi to the e, well, what's the exponent of pi that gives you pi to the e? Well, it's e. And so in general, we say that log base b of that base to a power equals that power because it's the exponent of that base of that base to an exponent. So this, you can think of this as the word exponent or power. It's the exponent of B that gives you B to the A. So those logarithms are going to always equal that exponent if these bases match up. And that's really great because now we have a way to undo exponentials. Logarithms undo exponentials, or in other words, they are inverses like addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, uh, squaring and square rooting. We now have, oh my goodness, uh, this is a tough one. Yeah, they go hand in hand. I don't know how to do that notation right now off the top of my head, but yeah. So logarithms and exponentials undo each other. And so I hope this was helpful. Feel free to look back at some of these other examples. And if you need some practice, here's a few more.